All right, let's go ahead and get started. LinkedIn and your resume are not the same thing. And I'll say this a ton of times today in the webinar, but it's really, really important to understand that they're, first of all, not the same, and second of all, should not be an overlap uh, of your resume. You want to optimize for the right audience. A lot of times people forget who exactly uses LinkedIn. So let's start with that and really understand what you're optimizing for when you're writing your LinkedIn profile, who's looking at it, why are they looking at it, and how you can be more appealing to them. There's generally a few different users. I've highlighted some of them here. First of all, recruiters use LinkedIn to find candidates for companies. Recruiters typically use a very different version of LinkedIn than you use. It's called LinkedIn Recruiter, and it's a special subscription that they purchase. And today in the webinar, I'll show you screenshots of what recruiters are able to see when they search candidates and what of your profile really stands out. Second of all, employers obviously use uh, LinkedIn as well. Some of them do not have premium subscriptions. Some of them are literally just browsing profiles and looking people up. So something that we're gonna talk about quite a bit is if somebody is looking at people like you to hire for their organizations, what are the things that specifically stand out and what are things that are best practices to know when folks are browsing your profile and you're specifically looking for work? And obviously your professional network, folks you want to connect with, maybe your coworkers, maybe folks in similar roles at other companies are on LinkedIn as well. And the second big group is salespeople. Uh, LinkedIn has another pro, uh, kind of uh, different type of profile type called Sales Navigator. And people who are in sales can purchase that and look for leads. So if you're more senior inside of an organization, uh, maybe you're a founder or a director or you represent a particular type of organization, salespeople use LinkedIn Navigator, uh, Sales Navigator to find you. And so just be mindful, this is the reason why you probably receive, uh, if you're more senior, a ton of messages about being invited to uh, different events or being asked to spend 15 minutes of your time. It's folks finding you through Navigator. And the reason why this is really, really important to understand is all of these people are looking at your LinkedIn profile at once. And so just being realistic here, it's not possible to optimize for all sorts of different needs why somebody might need to find you on LinkedIn. You can't simultaneously be as attractive to a recruiter as you could be to your professional network as you could be to salespeople. And so the best strategy in how to think about your LinkedIn is thinking about it as a social network profile, which it is, it's a professional social network. And making sure you highlight sufficient information to really have people find out enough about you to be intrigued and interested to reach out to you for whatever of these purposes they might be uh, seeking you out. Maybe it's a recruiter, maybe it's an employer, maybe somebody else who wants to connect with you or a salesperson. Your LinkedIn profile should be sufficiently general to leave you open for all of these opportunities. And then if you are specifically using LinkedIn to get hired, your resume should be a supplement to your LinkedIn um, that you send together with a blurb for folks that are interested in you. Um, when people search for you on LinkedIn, uh, generally the things that they see first are your photo, name, and headline. Um, so these, and optimizing these is the first thing we're going to do today. It's incredibly important because it's your basically first impression. Um, making sure that these are right makes a very, very big difference for people. So let's dive in. Your photo is the strongest opportunity for a personal impression. And believe it or not, even though it sounds really basic, it is something that people get wrong all of the time. Uh, let's dive in to be a little bit more specific. Don't fall into these traps. If you have a photo that you've cropped where you are with other people, even if this is the best photo of you smiling, it is not a photo that's appropriate for LinkedIn. If you have a photo where you're not even looking at the camera uh, or maybe wearing sunglasses like the second photo, it's not appropriate for LinkedIn. And then the third type of photo that is you know, horrible is a photo where you're not smiling or you don't look professional or where you don't look inviting. What you want to do ideally with your LinkedIn photo is have a photo that's on a solid background that has good lighting, a photo where you're smiling, looking at the camera and well put together. Um, and not all folks can afford to have a professional photo taken and that's absolutely all right. There is a free way to take any photo that you like where you are in the photo and remove the background from it. It's a website called remove.bg 
Um, it's again, completely free to use and you can take any photo of yourself, upload it, it will remove the background and then you can put the photo on the colored solid background or just use it on its own for LinkedIn. The photo that I uh, posted up here was uh, removed from remove.bg. Um, and as you can see, it looks really professional, really clean, and you could do that for yourself as well. The second thing is your background. Keep your background incredibly simple. So anything kind of crazy looking, photos of your family or photos of your team are not appropriate here. Another free resource you could use is unsplash.com. Um, they have a ton of patterned backgrounds that you could use. So if you go to unsplash and just type the word pattern, pretty much everything that comes up would be appropriate to use as your LinkedIn background. And it's completely free for you to use as well. Be very, very brief with your taglines. One thing that I like to um, advise folks a ton when we work with people at Candor to fix their profiles is look at somebody who is very, very senior in the field that you're in and emulate them. If the senior people in your field have very simple taglines, then you should also have a simple tagline. The best thing to do is to put your position in company um, like Ariana did here with a very bad thing to do is to get really creative in this field. So here's some examples of what not to do and examples of bad LinkedIn profiles that would give a very negative impression. I've edited out folks' names, um, but you could see the first one is uh, Research Goddess and Unicorn Wrangler and Hewlett Packard. While that may be interesting, it's certainly not going to leave the impression that you think it might. This is not the place to be sassy or, or, or funny. Uh, it's a it's the first thing that people see when they search for you. And so it's not really clear what you do for a living when you write something like that. Having a ton of tags that are stacked next to each other. So marketing manager at Uber, growth hacker, digital marketing specialist, growth marketing and launch strategy also makes it very hard for people to understand what exactly you do. Um, in this case, at least the person put that they're a marketing manager first. Uh, but typically having this many different things stacked next to each other is confusing, especially if they're very, very different. And then the last example is um, over 20 million with LinkedIn and social selling. Ask me how this might be appropriate if you are uh, an entrepreneur or somebody who works for themselves selling a specific product. But it is not appropriate if you are employed somewhere and you're trying to highlight what you do for a living. Here's an example just to uh, be very clear about what people see. So I just looked up Jane Smith last night and here's kind of three different examples of a Jane Smith that come up. Um, the first one is Jane Smith, who's an IT professional at CA Technologies. Um, it's very clear what Jane does. You can see a photo of her. Uh, the second one um, is an owner and social media manager at Positively Divorced, turning a negative past into a positive future. Um, it's very unclear what the second Mary Jane Smith actually does. And to be quite frank with you, she might be exactly what I'm looking for, but I would never click on this um, because I don't know what she's doing. And then the third one doesn't have a photo. Um, profiles without a photo get very, very few clicks from recruiters. So if you are specifically looking um, to get hired and this is what you're using LinkedIn for, keep in mind that recruiters are 14 times more likely to click on your profile if you have a photo, um, according to a recent study by LinkedIn. So make sure your photo settings uh, in LinkedIn are correct and that people can actually find you and look at your photo. There's absolutely no point of using LinkedIn if you don't have a photo in there because you will have very low engagement with the people that engage with you, whether it's from your professional network or from recruiters trying to find you. Candor helps tech professionals get paid more.